Welcome in to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller, thanks for joining us. <laughs> I hope you have your seatbelt fastened. I've entitled this The Year in the RV Part 2 because we're going to do it again. <laughs> and this time, you're going to be along. See, last time when I did The Year in the RV, there was no podcast. The podcast came in 2013. The last or the first year in the RV was 2009. Basically, that whole year I spent in an RV thinking I would travel around. Mostly I didn't. I stayed put uh, because I had a job in the certain side of Dallas where I was camped nearby and just kind of stayed there. It was easier. This time we're rolling. Wheels up. So hopefully in the next few minutes, we'll talk about a little bit of subconscious work for sure. Some heartfelt work. Uh, What makes your heart happy? And the other thing is a little bit of astrology, but not much. Actually, that is going to be told on the Monday, December 20th edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast is what happened on the astrology. I'm not going to go into that, but if you're interested in it, I'm not going to do it here. But if you're interested in it, catch the December 20th, 2021 Fun Astrology episode, and you'll hear the astrology piece of this, which was equally amazing. All right, so what in the world is going on? Well, several things. One is I kind of feel like on a couple of levels I've outgrown where I am. Like things have gone really, really well here, but it happened really fast. And there's this growth phase that I need to step into that basically on several fronts, including excessive noise that has come into this area since I've been here, making it difficult to do what I do. I was trying to finish an audio book, and because of neighborhood noise, I wasn't able to, so I had to leave mid-ship project. And I just don't want that to be in my reality going forward. I mean, I need to be able to be at a point where I can do what I do on somewhat of a predictable level. All right, so that was kind of the the crisis that needed to be solved. So when I was in Dallas last two weeks meeting my second granddaughter, little Lily Kate, having a really fun time with two-year-old granddaughter Lucy, and just having a great time with my kids as well. My son is a biomedical engineer, so he solves complex problems all day long. So I thought my little geographical problem is not that big of a deal. Well, no question, my kids would like me closer to Dallas. I'm about 1,200 miles, not exactly, I'm exactly 1,300 miles away. I just drove it. Well, figure 100, yeah, it's 1,200 miles uh, from where I am to where my kids are. And they would obviously like me closer, and I get it. And then my son said, Dad, you never stayed more than three years anywhere for the last 10. So he said, you just ought to be in an RV. That kind of came as a shock. I really didn't expect him to say that. But here's my engineer son in a conversation about where should Dad go, says, just try an RV. Well, I'll tell you what. My soul leapt for joy when he said those words. So there's a clue right there. When something makes you feel really, really good, even if it's something kind of big and daunting, like I'm going to move into an RV, um, that go lean in that direction. And that's what I did. I leaned in it only from a point of exploration. And I actually hit a wall. Because really for me to take this booth that I absolutely love, which is big and heavy and really needs to be just set up somewhere and left up, uh, is not conducive. The only kind of RV that would accommodate this booth is what they call a toy hauler. Basically, they're mo- they're made to carry ATVs around these all-terrain vehicles. They're big. They're bulky. They would take a lot to tow. If I got a fifth wheel again, it would be a dually diesel truck to do. And I'm just like, no, no, no. I just don't want to do that. But I got to looking at these Sprinter vans, and I thought, hmm, okay, now that is really, really small. But if you had a trailer that could accommodate the booth, would it be possible to pull the booth behind the van and go from place to place. Well, there's a problem with that. Number one, everybody else has the same idea. So so sprinter vans are really not that available. 
the other thing is that trailers are have been hit right in the noggin with the supply chain shortages that have been going on. So if you want to special order a trailer, it's going to be four to six months. And nobody makes a standard trailer that is the height that I would need in order to stand my booth up. I need eight feet. They all come six and a half. So while I heard my son's message, in doing some research, I dismissed the idea of dragging some big monstrosity all around the place. I didn't want to get a coach because then I would be towing a car and it just, I, that whole thing just wasn't, didn't sound right, didn't feel right. But as I got to looking around at these vans, the thing about the van is that it's inconspicuous. So here's what triggered it for me, actually, is as we were continuing just the exploration conversation, my son said, you know, he said, you can park a RV in front of our house for three days. He didn't know that what he did was trigger this idea, but that was where I thought, wow, well, then if I had a van, where else could I park it for three days? The answer is your neighborhood, <laughs> and I might come do it. So the point is, I can park this thing anywhere. You know, it's pretty widely known that you can park an RV in Walmart parking lots, and I think Camping World allows it in some locations, and probably a few other places where you can overnight in your RV. Well, those are relegated. I mean, if you tried to park an RV in XYZ neighborhood, just pick one on the map, you're going to get run off. But if you park a van in that neighborhood, nobody's going to ask any questions. I mean, you can park in a church parking lot at least not on Sunday morning, but you know what I mean. Or you could park at a cemetery. <laughs> I mean, why not? Be quiet. And I'm thinking, you know, it draw, it's, it's, the, it's the wheelbase of a car, so you can park it in a regular grocery store parking place. So I'm kind of thinking, wow, that is very valuable. Now, the trade-off, obviously, is space. And I'm over six foot three, so I need a little bit of headroom, and already I've I've knocked myself silly in this thing enough to know that, Thomas, you have to be very slow to move your head around in this, in this thing until you get used to it. But, um, yeah, so the van idea was intriguing, and the schedule that my son laid out had one afternoon hole on Tuesday, and I went RV shopping and had actually been given a clue by a friend to go to this one particular dealership and had a very good reason why. So I did, and they had one van available. The guy told me, he said, it is absolutely unheard of that you were able to walk onto this dealership and go out there and pick a van, and we had one. He said, they do not last. They are gone in hours, not days. They had just gotten this one in. I guess it had my name on it because it was there waiting for me. So I've really come to trust and believe in this astrological system that I've been studying with this guy, Robert Glasscock. And um, he taught me well because I was able to throw down the chart, ask the very specific question, should I buy this van now? And it was a resounding yes, so I did. I mean, there were several other things, and that's what I covered on the Fun Astrology podcast for December 20th. And there were many other cool things about it beside the yes, no answer. So I got that in place. Okay, got that. Now, what about the trailer? What am I going to do about my audio booth and my audiobooks and the very important part of everything that I do? Well, long story short, like I said, no eight-foot trailers anywhere except one. I think in America. And guess what town it's in? Thomasville, North Carolina not even two hours from where I live. As I am recording this, I am about to embark on heading that direction to go pick up the trailer, where I will come back and mount the booth in it over the axles, and I will have an additional 10 feet in that trailer to put stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to pack it lightly, but I am going to be able to have the lifestyle things that would make me functional in the world that, you know, like the way that I like to live, like I've got to make my chai tea. Well, there's not room for the chai tea ingredients in the van, so they're going to have to go in the trailer. And then I can go to any given particular area 
and base from there and travel around that area. So the trailer will be kind of the focal point. Maybe it stays at a campground or maybe it stays at a storage unit for a while and I can come and go with it. But if I'm recording an audio book, what I'll probably do is go find a fairly quiet camping environment and I'll just knock the book out while I'm there and be in nature, be able to take some nice breaks, go on walks. And then the other thing that we're going to do is really expand this out and be doing video channels and all kinds of stuff on social media that, you know, when you when you do what I do on a daily basis, it's not very exciting. I mean, I people talk about Instagram and I'm not on Instagram because I'm like, what am I going to show? You know, I mean, today looks like yesterday and six months ago. You know, it's nothing to sure it changed, but hopefully <laughs> that's it. Well, now, by golly, we've got we're going to have a bunch of stuff to show and it's going to be amazing. So that's the what happened. I did. I bought the van right there. When the astrology chart showed me what it showed me, hands down, I was like, I'm going to figure this out. The energy is too good to ignore this and let somebody else come buy this van. See, so that's one lesson is when the universe gives you a green light, you got to jump on it, even if it's like you're not ready. Had I answered all the questions? No, far from it. But when you get the alignment and then an eight-foot interior height trailer drops out of the sky, it's in a town with your name in it less than two hours away from your front door. Do you see how the universe is starting to align these things? Now, could there be challenges? Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. That's the way that, you know, the lessons are learned through the challenges, too. But when you feel that calling in your soul, you know, like I have wanted to, in essence, evangelize astrology and this soul-based journey that we talk about, and here is a beautiful, perfect way to do it, taking it town by town, around the country, extending this message out during the time of a pandemic when everybody has been sheltered in. Well, we'll go to you and we'll do it outdoors because that's the most perfect environment for this kind of message anyway. And then, boom, support from the universe. I mean, I, am I blown away? I'm like my jaw is on the floor. I mean, it's like been this wow. And yet at the same time, when you kind of get past in your growth, like I think, you know, when I did this the first time, I had no clue. I got the RV. The first RV was born out of fear. Whole different scenario. I was afraid of what might happen in the world. I've told you how fear drove every decision in my life. Was there any fear involved in this decision whatsoever? Not an ounce. In fact, the opposite. It was really confidence. It was boldly stepping into something that seemed crazy, but I'm going to step into it anyway. So this is just going to extend this whole message on the astrology side, on the on the subconscious mind mastery side. I'm going to have so many incredible stories to tell on this journey. The other piece, the subconscious piece, is I don't know how or where it comes from. But there has to be some kind of subconscious journeying built into my psyche. And it must have been favorable because really for about the last 20 years, I've wanted to do this. Like I said, thought I'd make a stab at it. 2009 ended up, the purpose of 2009 was very clear. That was for me to work on me. Also, because I had an RV for a year, I learned quite a bit. So I have things that I can already put to use and did in deciding what I would buy and what I would accept and not accept on this deal. But when your soul feels so light and so free and so excited, I mean, even before I had the van, just the decision that I was going to go look for one, I was starting to turn cartwheels. No, I promise I'm 62. No, I wasn't doing it physically. I was doing it spiritually and emotionally. You know what I mean? My soul was jumping for joy. It was like a little kid running through the field doing cartwheels. I mean, I was that free. You could imagine just seeing the scene. And that's how I felt inside. Then when the chart confirmed it, it just was icing on the cake. So we are going to be telling some stories. And that's the first one, how things lined up incredibly. A van that didn't exist, a trailer that didn't exist, two hours away, being basically forced out of the situation that I'm in now. One door closes, another window opens. And I wasn't worried about what was going to happen. 
And the same process that I've used since that 2009 event when I was in that RV and learned the lesson of creating in my mind, I didn't have anything to go with other than it was going to work out. And we've talked about this too as here and I think on the, the astrology podcast is that energy is moving a lot faster these days. So, I mean, in a matter of days, this just was there. Boom, 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 boom. So I kind of feel that there's a destiny piece to it as well. So this story will continue to unfold, and I will be keeping you very informed as we go along the way and on the journey. And I hope that some of the things that have happened here in my own life over the last two weeks encourage you as doors are opening and closing and things are shifting and moving around in your own life. I think the biggest thing I would encourage is to just stay on the path that you know you're supposed to be on and don't resist when things come up. It's our being open to the solution that opens the doors. We have an amazing journey ahead, and I will be keeping you posted. Thanks so much for listening. And now it brings new meaning to the term, enjoy the journey. I'm Thomas Miller. Thanks for listening.